Word to the wise, you walk into your local arcade and see this young lady at the Papa Shot machine, I'd recommend keeping your money in your pocket. Even dress for her media day appearance, Caitlin Clark getting buckets, as is Hawkeye men's guard Connor McCaffrey here at Gamebridge Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. The players getting a moment to enjoy before addressing the media. Let's head back to Commissioner Next Kevin Next to the Warren. podium will be the head women's basketball coach at the University of Iowa, who's an iconic figure in college basketball entering her 21st season, 419 victories at Iowa, 775 victories during her career, and two out of the last three years they've been in the Sweet 16. So again, welcome to the stage, Coach Lisa Bluter. Good morning. It's uh, good to be here. I have to tell you, it was very strange walking into the building this morning in October versus in March. Uh, but it feels good to be here. Uh, we're hoping, obviously, for a long stay in March. But I, I know it's sounding like a worn out statement because I think we're all saying the same thing when we get up here. But Big Ten women's basketball is better than ever. Our conference has so much to be excited about coming off of the success of last year. I honestly believe it's easier to win or to be in the Sweet 16 than it is to win the Big Ten Championship. As evidenced from last year, four teams from the Big Ten being in the Sweet 16 and seven All-Americans returning this year. Of course, at Iowa, the excitement is an all-time high. Season tickets are at an all-time high of being sold right now. Our fan base is ready to come back to Carver Hawkeye Arena, rock it again, and make it one of the hardest places to play in women's basketball in the country. We have a lot to build around with all five starters returning. Of course, um, coming off of a Big Ten championship appearance and a Sweet 16 appearance, and all five of those women coming back, including, uh, you may have heard of her, Caitlin Clark. Um, we think she's one of the nation's best. And then, of course, Monica Sinano, who led the country in field goal percentage last year. And our supporting cast is what makes it all work. Uh, kids like Kate Martin. Uh, kids like Gabby Marshall and McKenna Warnock, and I think we have a deeper bench than we've ever had. Thank you, Coach. We'll now open up to questions. Second row. Hey, Coach, you mentioned her. She's uh, pretty, pretty famous now, Caitlin. Um, how has she handled the like NIL world, or have you seen her handle the NIL world, the added shame that comes with being one of the best players in the country? Yeah, she had a, a tremendous summer. Um, she won her third gold medal with USA Basketball. Uh, she was the captain of the under-19 team, the MVP of that team. Um, so she deserves all the accolades that are coming her way. And uh, how has she handled it? Uh, not a bit differently than when she came in as a freshman. I mean, you would not know that there's any more pressure on her by the way she acts in practice or around the team. Um, the NIL is something, yeah, that she is dealing with, but um, I think she has a great supportive team around her to help her with that situation. And, and we're proud of the fact that one of our players is so sought after for the NIL. Uh, we think that's a tremendous thing for our program. I mean, uh, you know, in Iowa, we always say there's no pro sports. And so the Iowa Hawkeyes are a big deal. And when you're a big deal, you get great attendance. I know last year or the two years ago, we were ninth best attended team in the United States. Um, but also you get you opportunities for things that will pro help you with the NIL. Hey, Lisa, John Bonenkamp from HawkeyeNation.com. Um, you talk about Monica and the way she's played the last couple of years. Who's going to kind of back her up now with Sharon Goodman being injured? What, what do you kind of do in the front court now? 
Yeah, Sharon Goodman, that was a big loss uh, in our first practice this year. Uh, she unfortunately uh, went down with an ACL tear, and Sharon was playing great. Um, last year, I mean, she shot 55% from the field. She was a tremendous backup uh, to Monica because she was so strong um, and was playing at a better level this year and this summer than, uh, than last year. So her game had really improved, and I was really expecting big things from Sharon. Um, obviously, with her now... Um, gone for the year. Uh, we'll be moving Addie O'Grady, who is a freshman, uh, but is our tallest player in our roster at 6'4". Uh, from Denver, Colorado, had a great career there, and uh, she'll be moving into that backup position for Monica. Additional questions for Coach? In the back? Uh, Lisa Gustafson, Doyle, Clark, what uh, teams across the country would love to have those three names at all in their programs? What is Iowa City? What is the University of Iowa? How do you attract those type of players that makes Iowa so uh, such a force every year, not only in the Big Ten, but in, in the NCAA tournament? I think there's a lot of things. Um, I think we have an incredible winning tradition uh, with our basketball program, and people want to play for people that win. Uh, they also want to play in front of a crowd. And, and our, our attendance is tremendous. And they're loud and they're enthusiastic and they make it a great home court advantage for us. Um, our players graduate and that's exciting for the women, but also I think it's the culture of our program. I, I think it's the, uh, when they come on campus, they feel how much these, this team cares about each other. Um, I, our, our culture is as strong as it's ever been. and. I think that's what attracts people to our program and also the stability of our coaching staff. I mean, we are the longest serving coaching staff in the Big Ten, and I think that parents respect the stability um, of that. Well, Coach, thank you so much for your time this morning. Good luck this season. Thank you, and go Hawks. Certainly no overstatement to say that Caitlin Clark's freshman year with Iowa, one of the greatest in the history of women's college basketball, won the Dan Dawn Staley Award as the nation's best guard after leading the nation in points, assists, and three-point field goals. And you heard her coach, Lisa Bluter, allude to the fact that she won the gold medal and the tournament MVP at this summer's FIBA U19 World Cup. Back to the stage and Commissioner Kevin Next Moore. to the podium is the men's head basketball coach at the University of Iowa. Fran McCafferty, uh, entering his 12th season, has 216 wins, which puts him second already on the all-time list at Iowa. Uh, but uh, I can tell you he's not only a great coach, he's a great person. And 40 years ago, when I was a freshman at the University of Pennsylvania and he was a senior, uh, he was coaching me. So I will always appreciate Coach McCafferty. Welcome to the podium. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here, uh, especially in person. I think everybody's thinking that, and it's great to be back. Uh, this is going to be uh, a really new experience for all of us. You know, when you graduate the National Player of the Year, and you've got two guys going to the NBA, and a team of really talented young players, all of whom are now going to be in a new role. And I think that's an exciting challenge for any coach. You know, kind of, we all knew the last couple of years what we were going to try to accomplish. Who was playing, who was going to get the bulk of the minutes, who was going to take most of the shots, what we were going to run. Well, now we have a different team. You know, it's a little bit smaller, uh, but we do have length and athleticism. I think we have great depth. Uh, we do have uh, two older guys that we're going to rely on for leadership, and that's Connor McCaffrey and Jordan Bohanna, both of whom are here. Uh, but after that, we've got a lot of youth, but I think we have great character, great chemistry, and it's going to be uh, a fun ride in that sense. Thank you, Coach. We'll now open up to questions. Second row. Hi, Coach. Alec Bussey, Rivals.com. Keegan Murray is a sophomore, and guys often take a huge jump between their freshman and sophomore year. What have you kind of seen from him in the summer and I guess now his practices have started? 
the, the thing about Keegan is he's, he's amazingly consistent. So what I saw from him this summer and this fall is exactly that. Uh, he, he drives it, he shoots it, he moves it, he can handle, uh, he rebounds, he blocks shots. Uh, he plays the game with a tremendous amount of intensity, but more importantly, an understanding of, of how to play. Uh, you know, he was a guard most of his life, and now he's playing kind of the, the front court position. He can guard a five, he can guard any position pretty, pretty much one through five. And I think what I've tried to do is encourage him, you know, to be great. You know, last year he was really successful. We all saw that an integral part of a very successful team. But now he's going to take that next step, I think, to being a star, uh, which we all want for him. And uh, he kind of doesn't view himself that way. He's very humble. But he, he knows he has that ability. And I consistently encourage him you know, to be the best player on the floor every day. Front row. Fran, Tom Bruce, Sports Illustrated, Indiana. You had uh, Luca for so long and dominated the ball so much on your offense through the year. And even though he was surrounded by a lot of good players, when you go into a new year now without him, uh, will we see a lot of sort of new things, fresh things? Has it been a summer of sort of thinking up new ideas? I think it, probably as much defensively as offensively, you, you're right. I mean, he was so consistently dominant offensively and it gave you so much confidence as a program as a coach as players on the floor coming down the stretch we could always run something for him he's going to get a bucket he's going to make the right decision uh, but we've always been kind of a motion team anyway and he kind of got that naturally we moved it we moved it we did run some sets uh, so we'll consistently run motion again. You know, we have, I think, a lot of players who can dribble, pass, and shoot. Uh, we run a five out. You know, a lot of times we ran five out with him, but he would end up in, and we would four out, one in, kind of. So I think from, from that standpoint, it will be a dramatic change not having him. But uh, he was so gifted at understanding whatever we were doing. You know, and that's what made him a great leader. If we were running sets, if we were running motion, if we were in transition, if we were playing against the zone, if they were pressing, if we were running a side out of bounds play or an out of bounds play under the basket, he was so incredibly cerebral. And, and you're right, you, you sort of take that for granted after a while when you have him for four years. It makes coaching a lot easier. And so now it's going to be a different challenge. Who's going to step into that role? Well, we don't have anybody that's 6'11 that's going to average 27 points a game. So. Where is the rest of the points going to come from? Will it be Keegan Murray? We just talked about him. Will it be Patrick McCaffrey? Will it be, you know, Bohannon moving over to the off guard position? We've got young guards coming in at the point. Uh, what big guys will step up for us? You know, will it be uh, Keegan's brother Chris, who's a tremendous player? I think he's got a chance. And Philip Rebecca, the transfer from North Dakota. So maybe our young guys, Joshua Gundelay and Riley Mulvey. But you know, we may play smaller, uh, but we we have, I think, as much depth as we've had in a long time. So we'll see how that works out. Hey, friend, John Bonenkamp, HawkeyeNation.com. You, you talk about Chris Murray, and, and you've talked about him all summer. Can you see that, that continued development in his game now that you've gotten into full practice again? Yeah, the, the, the thing about Chris is you know, he just has to develop his confidence, John. I mean, he... He's really talented. I mean, you, you look at him, and he looks exactly like his brother, and, and you sort of expect him to be exactly like his brother. And, and they've always played a little bit differently. Uh, but they've always both been really good. They both can dribble, pass, and shoot. They both rebound and block shots. You know, Chris, I think, is a, is a very good three-point shooter. Uh, and they can play together. And, and, and like I said, we can... We can be versatile in terms of the offense we run, but also how we play defensively. We can switch. We can switch with guards because those two can guard backcourt players, which is not easy in this league. You know, but they're both 6'8". They both have 6'11 wingspans. And uh, it'll be fun watching them both play together this year. Third row over here. Fran, Adam Jarney with the Columbus Dispatch. Jordan Bohannon's about to become the Big Ten's all-time leading three-point shooter. 
when you've had somebody as long as you've had him, what has it been like to see him grow into that role and excel in that role and, and watching someone with that kind of talent shoot every day in practice? What has that been like for you to see that transpire? Well, I'll tell you what. I mean, it's funny you bring that up because yesterday he was absolutely on fire in practice. I mean, he must have made 10 or 11 threes. Uh, so that's obviously fun to watch, especially when you lose Garza. But for him, pretty much from the minute he got there, he had a, he had a very mature game. Uh, he started for us you know, about the fifth or sixth game into the season and has been starting ever since. Uh, he's always played the point, and he may play some there, but you know, we've kind of moved him to the off-guard position. He's running around uh, in that position, shooting threes and, and moving without the ball, which he's also been very good at. But it's really hard to be that consistent in this league, you know, and, and when you get somebody like that, it's it's really special to 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 go on the floor knowing that you have a guy in you know, his freshman year he made eight threes on the road at Maryland. I mean it's just that's rare. And and that says a lot about his character and his mental toughness. You know, he has a swag about him that, you know, this team is gonna need and we're very fortunate that he decided to come back. We have time for one final question. Well, thank you so much for your time right, this morning, you. Coach. Good luck this season. We will now take another. So the Hawkeyes will not just have to replace two-time Big Ten Player of the Year and reigning National Player of the Year, Luca Garza, but also Joe Wieskamp, who was actually taken ahead of Garza in this spring's NBA draft. C.J. Frederick, Jack Nungy transferring as well. So we just heard Fran McCaffrey talk about Jordan Bohannon, who does return for his sixth season in Iowa City.